All right, so I had a customer come to me um, requesting an industrial table that they saw on Pinterest for a remodel they were doing for this basement um, of a house that was actually on an HGTV show. Uh, so this is what I ended up going and putting together. Now I was able to use my Evolution Evo Saw 380, but I had to take the guard off to be able to cut the five inch channel. Um, cutting that channel, uh, it worked great. Um, with this saw, I only have the 14 inch blade on. If I had a 15 inch blade on, I think I probably could have kept the guard on. Um, but it was just the side guard. I wasn't really worried. I was careful with it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, but I had to do what I had to do to get it in my saw. And I did not want to cut all these pieces with the horizontal bandsaw. One problem with this type of saw is it leaves a huge mess. Um, it takes a while to clean up, but it, you know, you make up that time and how fast um, your saw cuts. Here's cutting out some. Um, different pieces on the plasma table. Uh, I'll show these again later in the clip. This is just part of the time lapse. I ended up setting up a kind of a jig. Um, I put some scrap on the table and ripped some lines in it so that um, it was square in the X and square to the Y of the gantry. And then I was able to uh, put these, um, you know, put, put these cut pieces of channel on there and I was able to cut the holes in them rather than drilling the holes in with the mag drill or putting them on the mill um, to cut them. So I was, it, it saved a ton of time being able to do this. When I you know, quoted out the job, I quoted it as if, um, if, if this wasn't gonna be the case, if I was gonna have to do them all by hand. And so I was able to make you know, a little bit more money uh, on my time being able to set it up on the plasma table with a jig so that it would you know, cut all my holes out. They turned out great. There were 68 holes, I believe, in total, or 64 in just the channel alone, um, not including the other parts. Uh, by the time I you know, welded everything together, everything lined up perfectly. A lot of these are just decorative holes for bolts to go in so that it, you know, it kind of acts as a, um, you know, almost like a, a fake rivet um, just, for, just for decoration to give it that industrial look. So um, this project, and actually the last few projects I've worked on that are larger framing projects, I've learned I need to invest in some fireball tool uh, squares so that it makes things a lot faster in squaring things up. This is a 5 by 10 welding table. It's in one inch thick. It's all Blanchard ground, so it's really flat, which I, I love that part about it. Uh, one thing I, I wish I had were some holes in it. Um, I'll probably end up getting uh, some of the Serta flat tables just for framing jobs like this. This, this table, I mean, it is extremely flat, which is great to work with. It's just you can't drop a clamp in the center of it, uh, which, which tends to be a problem sometimes. Um, so I really need to pick up some fireball tools. I'm going to do that here shortly uh, so that it can make squaring these frames up uh, a lot faster. Um, and I need to, hopefully in the future, I've got a smaller jig table that's a 2 by 4 I'll have to show you guys in another video. Uh, that I actually built and that works great because I can drop a clamp anywhere in it but again it's only two foot by four foot so larger jobs where I'm building a large frame for something um, I can't fit those on there so here I am just getting everything squared up and triple and quadruple checking everything before I weld this together I did not want to make any mistakes uh, most of the time I would say 98 percent of the time I supply all the materials um, and the you know I so I usually have a little bit extra. In this case, the customer supplied the material, which I rarely ever allow to happen, but um, they supplied the materials and there was no extra left. So um, I couldn't really make any mistakes or, or afford to make any mistakes on this one. That little welder, the reason it's not on a welding cart is, um, I actually, this is over in my uncle's shop. Uh, I didn't want to build it at home. I figured I'd take it up there. He's got a little bit more room. We're still waiting on building a building um, because of the lumber shortage, uh, I had to put that off until hopefully this spring I'll be able to build one. But I drugged a little Miller 212 over rather than the 252. It's a lot easier to throw in the truck. Um, and uh, I didn't want to bring the cart over and everything with it. I probably should have, uh, seeing that it took me you know, a, a few different days in the evenings just going over there to work on it. Um, but uh, I just brought it over without the cart, so I just threw it up on top of the table so I could reach everything. It's a nice welder. I absolutely love welding with it. I like the size of the MIG gun. Um, 252, you know, it's not bad. The, the gun's not, the stock gun that comes on the 252 isn't huge. Uh, it doesn't really, you know, it's not super bulky. I've definitely had bulkier MIG guns to worry about, but um, 
I like being able to have a smaller MIG gun to, to work with sometimes and get into small corners and things like that a little bit easier. Uh, one thing I will say about the 212 is I am not a fan of the auto set feature. I am um, really have never found an auto set machine that I trust, I guess. I'd rather dial it in myself. Um, but it is, I mean, once you put it on, you know, manual settings and dial it in for yourself, it runs really smooth, um, gives a really good arc. I'd suggest it to anyone, especially if you're just doing like a home hobby thing um, or maybe a little bit more serious of a home hobby thing, weekend warrior type of deal. It's a really good machine. It runs a really smooth bead. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it, the spatter is not horrible on it. And it's, it's relatively affordable. Uh, I think we you know, gave like 1100 bucks for this machine. Um, you know, but it, we've, we've had it for several years and it's been a really good, really good welder so far. Um, use it for lighter material. Now this is like almost 3 8 thick, 5 inch channel. Um, I would have rather welded it with my 252, but like I said, I didn't have anyone around to help me load it in the truck. And I think it weighs like 180 pounds and it's really awkward to pick up. So um, I figured I would bring the 211 over anyway uh, and it worked just fine. It burns in just fine. I put smaller wire in. Got, I run 023 in this um, just for more sheet metal work and uh, with 023 you can get a lot more penetration so it's it's a slower process but you can get more penetration than if I was to run a thick wire in that 212 so um, you can actually weld some pretty thick stuff uh, with this with this setup and since it's just a table you know it's it's not uh, like it's got to support a train even though it probably would this is way overkill on a table or on a desk um, but it actually, you know, it, it worked out just fine. The customer really wanted um, a heavy desk. We went over numbers before we started and said that, you know, this table is going to be uh, just the frame alone, um, which is the part I'm responsible for, is going to weigh around 600 pounds. Uh, it's around 600 pounds of steel, and um, it's heavy. It's 10 pounds per foot, and each leg weighs around 60 pounds. You'll see uh, a little bit later that the, the legs actually... Um, are two pieces of channel that are kind of, they're bolted together, um, and then one of them sits flush with the bottom of the desk, and the other one actually bolts up to one of those holes to keep it from wobbling, and then there's three plates that go inside, two plates, sorry, that um, help it so that it actually welds, or it bolts into three of the holes that are existing on the, the outer perimeter of this frame. Uh, I always start with these jobs with good intentions of filming the whole thing and then either my camera dies or I forget it um, or I accidentally you know turn it off when I think I'm turning it on uh, which is what happens with the second part of this so I'm, you know here we have this video of, um, so far of all the operations up till this point but then there will be a, a little bit of a, uh, a jump here shortly where um, we miss out on some work but trying to get better at it trying to step up my camera game a little bit um, so I can get a little bit better video. Again, this camera, the quality on it's really low. I have a better camera um, that I just didn't use this day for whatever reason. But um, this building this uh, frame on this table was definitely worth the hassle of bringing all my stuff over to my uncle's. I have a four by eight table that's an inch and a quarter thick, and it's a really nice table too. But it does have um, a little bit of a bow to it um, in two regions. And I don't like doing large frames on it for that reason because I wanted this to sit really flat. Um, it probably would have been fine anyway, but I just wanted to be extra careful and make sure that this was going to have, you know, be really accurate by the time it was done. It was the first time I'm, I'm doing work for a new customer, and uh, I wanted to make sure everything was going to be top-notch for them. Um, this, this house that they're doing, I said earlier, was redone on an HGTV show several years ago, and uh, it's a historic home, and they just dumped uh, quite a bit of money into remodeling the basement. On the TV show, they remodeled the outside and the inside, except for the basement, uh, to get all their you know good shots in, but they didn't do the basement. And so this um, the owner of this house hired out this contractor uh, to redo the basement, and then he wanted to furnish it as well. And so the contractor then hired me to uh, build this desk for the customer. They agreed on um, what style of desk. I was able to send them over some prints that they liked, and uh, we basically went from there. This project um, took a little, took a, a few more hours than I was expecting originally, uh, but it actually it went pretty smooth. Um, by the time I was done, you'll see a little bit later on. There's actually a wing 
that goes onto the side of this desk. And uh, by the time it was all said and done, every surface of the top of this uh, was within a 30 second of an inch all the way across, including the wing that bolts on. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, it, it doesn't wobble when it's all said and done. It sits very flat and very flush and uh, has a good look to it with all the bolts in. Um, the customer wanted to, you know, his only requirement was that it was within an eighth of an inch of wobble, I guess, across the eight foot span, um, which really this isn't quite eight feet, but it's close. Uh, and we were able to do that just fine, no issues at all. Um, and it, the frame actually, even though it's three eighths thick, it actually has a little bit of a flex to it. Uh, because the legs are so heavy. So even when I took it, you know, I, I built everything on the welding table that's, you know, dead nuts flat. But even when I took it off and put it on the ground in areas that I know aren't perfect, um, it was able to sit really solid and rigid um, on those parts because uh, the, the frame, I think, has, you know, has a little bit of an allowance there on uh, flexibility. He also wanted the top and bottom welds on the corners ground flush. So what I did was I ground those down, the top and bottom first, and then I ran vertical welds on the corners so that it appeared like I just ground around that weld where it ended. Um, but really I just ran, you know, some nice, I guess, decorative looking beads uh, down, the, down the corner so you could still see that it was, you know, hand built. It wasn't just formed like this. Um, now, obviously, if you saw a table like this and you're a welder or a fabricator or machinist, you already know that someone built it, but there's a lot of people that have no idea um, what metalworking processes are. And so we wanted to leave, you know, some visible beads, and I did that around the feet uh, on the legs as well, and um, it turned out with a really, really good look uh, to the whole thing here. So I ground it down, and then I sanded it to get rid of some of the grinding grind uh, marks. I tried to use a palm sander for a while, and I really didn't like how that was working, so I got the die grinder out with a little flap wheel on it, and it worked really good. I got a, um, you know, a, a little bit finer uh, paper on there, and I was able to uh, just leave kind of a brushed finish on it. Now, the, all I was doing was the framework of this, or the metal work. The customer is installing an inch and a half thick slab of um, walnut on the top with a dark stain. Uh, which so it should look you know pretty good I'm, I'm excited to see it when it's done uh, at the time that i'm recording this i i have not seen it yet um he's still working on it but i will throw some pictures up at the end of this video before i post it of what it looks like all said and done and the plan is to paint it black originally they were trying to do like a distressed red color but they're going to paint it black and then they're going to clear the bolts um, clear coat the bolts so they don't rust and leave them more of a metallic finish so again it should turn out pretty cool once it's all said and done um, grinding these corners down you know I, I'm not a huge fan of finish work just because it's really tedious and uh, I don't like it that much but um, it was definitely worth doing it, it turned out looking really good it's really smooth uh, and left those corners here it is where um, I put the legs on this is before anything was welded I wanted to make sure everything was going to fit up right and um, to be able to make sure those legs don't wobble, I had to plasma cut out some bracketry uh, that could be welded in there that they would then bolt to. All of this has to disassemble. This entire table has to be able to come apart in pieces so that they can take it to the basement of this house. And, you know, if the table's 800 pounds or 600 pounds um, when it's all together, you don't want to try to move that. Uh, there's some 3 8 plate. Uh, I cut it out with a Hypertherm PowerMax 65 and it cuts out like butter. There's what those look like afterwards. They turned out great. Those are the feet, uh, by the way. I was able to just grind down the um, lead in and lead outs on those and you can't even tell where they're at. Well, this is the finished product before the customer came and picked it up. When he came by, he was really happy with it. We unbolted everything and loaded it into his vehicle and he took it home um, and the contractor finished up the top with a one inch piece of walnut uh, that he put on there. Now the, the customer decided that after he saw the welding in the raw steel finish, that's what he liked, so he decided to not have it painted and instead just have it clear coated. Now these pictures here are the end result before it was clear coated. I don't have any final pictures. I wasn't a part of that process. So um, I hope you guys liked it. And if you did, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button below. 
I've got other videos coming up soon of different builds that I've done. I've built a plate roller, I built a belt grinder, two CNC plasma tables, a 35 ton NC press brake. Um, I've also got you know different fire pits and grills and um, smokers that I've made as well and as well as um, customer jobs that I've done in the past that I've recorded and customer jobs that I'm doing now and in the future. Well, whether it was what not to do or what to do, I hope you guys were able to learn something from this video.